Let's talk about Richard Dawkins. I don't want to talk about Richard Dawkins. I have better things to talk about in general than Richard Dawkins, but I feel like we have to because this guy's had an insane week where he gets in the news. He's trending on Twitter again for all the wrong reasons. And all of it, the only reason I feel like I have to talk about it is because for better or for worse, he still represents the guy people think of when they think of atheism. Okay, so here's what happened with Dawkins, okay? Um, And then we will, it's just so damn depressing. Let me start with this. He said this week that Facebook censored him because of a tweet he made. And I'm going to start at that tweet and we're going to try to do this chronologically, okay? This goes back to a week ago because Dawkins heard about the Olympics and he tweeted what J.K. Rowling had tweeted, what a bunch of right-wing conspiracy theorist was tweeting about the Algerian boxer, uh, the female boxer who was uh, who ended up winning the gold medal. So this is what he tweeted. I'm going to zoom in on this so you could see it. This is a picture of two of the boxers um, who were competing in the Olympics. And here's his commentary. Two men masquerading as women are being allowed to box against real women in the Olympics. And the person on the left, over there in the pink, uh, that's the one who ended up winning gold, Imani Khalif, an Algerian woman who, like I said, went on to win the gold medal. Now, if you haven't followed this controversy very very much, let me try to sum it up as best I can. And I know I'm not doing every detail, but here's the idea. Khalif was accused of having XY chromosomes and therefore not being a real woman. The problem with that is that Khalif was assigned female at birth, lives her life as a woman, identifies as a woman today. She is not trans. She is not intersex. She has never been anything except female. The International Olympic Committee, like the group that oversees the Olympics, said that Khalif and that other boxer met their eligibility criteria. You would think the IOC has a vested interest in making sure the rules are being followed at all times because that's how the Olympics works. Like you'll get disqualified if you break the rules. I saw people get disqualified in different events. Like countries lost medals because someone didn't touch the wall the right way. Or You think they're going to let someone compete without going through all these tests and stuff like that? That's insane. So the IOC said, yeah, this person's fine. So there was that. And it's also ridiculous to think that Khalif, if she were an openly trans woman, like, do you think that's even possible in Algeria, a country that has one of the worst track records in the world when it comes to LGBTQ rights? Those are like non-existent in Algeria. And critics are who are pretending that she's trans are suggesting that not only she lives as a trans woman in Algeria, but Algeria allowed her to represent their country on a global stage. Like, none of that makes any sense. In fact, at the Olympics, there were zero trans athletes competing this year. Now, it's possible they could be eligible in certain circumstances, but this year, there were none. That's it. That's how it was. So where did this controversy come from where people started accusing her of being trans? Well, basically... There were stories spread about how both of those boxers were eliminated from the International Boxing Association's World Championships last year because the IBA's president said they failed a gender eligibility test because of their XY chromosomes. And you would think, well, that seems pretty straightforward, right? But no, because guess what? That claim was never backed up by any evidence. It's not like they released any tests or anything. Oh, and by the way, the IBA's president is Russian, and they only brought up that claim that Khalif was trans after Khalif beat another female boxer who was Russian. And after they disqualified Khalif for that reason, the Russian boxer like rose in the standings at that tournament. Like, that seems pretty corrupt, don't you think? It's it's interesting that the IBA did not ban Khalif until after she beat that Russian opponent. So this allegation that J.K. Rowling made, uh, here's here's what J.K. Rowling 
posted online earlier in the month, the idea that those objecting to a male punching a female in the name of sport are objecting because they believe Khalif to be trans is a joke. We object because we saw a male punching a female. No, you didn't. You know how I know that? Because it was a woman punching another woman because it's boxing in the Olympics. Even Khalif's opponent in that match, who lost it within like a minute, said later, yeah, I was crying. I'm paraphrasing. Like she said, I was crying. I was upset. I did not shake Khalif's hand. But it wasn't out of disrespect to Khalif. It's because my Olympics, my Olympic dream was over and I was sad, which makes sense. Like she was sad she lost. She was sad she didn't get to go on. But she, even the opponent was like, but yeah, Khalif won fair and square. Everything is cool. So JK Rowling spread that lie. Uh, and anyway, so Richard Dawkins spread this same lie. He didn't just spread the lie. He also started tweeting other anti-trans stuff because Dawkins is just ridiculously anti-trans. Here's another one Dawkins posted. Uh, a guy on a motorcycle, I guess, in front of a bunch of cyclists. And there's the caption. Biker who identifies as a cyclist wins the Tour de France. Ha ha ha. It's anti-trans because trans people identify as helicopters, whatever the joke is supposed to be. He also retweeted this joke. Uh, you could see at the top of your screen, Richard Dawkins retweeted this. First biological cheetah who identifies as a man set to take gold for a misspelled Liechtenstein at the Paris Olympics. Get it? Because trans people are like that cheetah and it's unfair, I think. I don't know. It's just Babylon B style anti-trans bullshit. So this is Dawkins now. This is who he is. He just spreads anti-trans misinformation for the hell of it because he's smart about evolution and dumb about like 90% of everything else. This is just who he is now. I've done another video in the past and another live stream where he platformed on his podcast an anti-trans person to just, let's just mock these things that they're very ignorant about. What Dawkins doesn't do, which is surprising to me because he is famous and he could get anybody he wants uh, on his podcast or whatnot. Like he could call up just about any scientist and say, I want to have a discussion about this and you know a lot about it. Would you talk to me? And they would almost certainly say yes. And he never does that. He only wants to talk to other crazy people. So all of that happened. It wasn't, I mean... Dawkins saying transphobic stuff, sadly, not that big of a surprise. But the reason this stuff became a big deal is because he ended up tweeting this last week. Uh, let me show you this. My entire Facebook account has been deleted. Seemingly, no reason given, because I tweeted that genetically male boxers such as Imani Khalif, XY, undisputed, should not fight women in Olympics. Of course, my opinion is open to civilized argument, but outright censorship? First of all, genetically male. How do you know that? You do not know that. You are getting that from misinformation that is online somewhere. What is this thing in the parentheses about Imani Khalif? X, Y, undisputed. What do you mean it's undisputed? It is very much disputed because that information is not coming from a credible source. And here's Dawkins just shitting it out there for the world to see. And then he's saying, my Facebook account was deleted because I tweeted that dumb thing, which also makes no sense at all. I'll get back to that in a second. But what's interesting about this, Elon Musk retweeted that with his usual one word comment. Wow. Uh, later on, responding to someone else posting about this. Look at this. Here's some rando saying, Facebook censors renowned UK biologists for opposing male athletes and women's sports, to which Elon Musk says, Facebook, aka Meta, can never be trusted. Yeah, you know who you should trust? A guy who can't work a live stream with Donald Trump in 2024. Okay. So that's how far this stuff was spreading. Dawkins spread his lies. Then he made an accusation, and then that started spreading everywhere. And now 
this whole story is all over the place, which is ridiculous. But think about this. His accusation, Dawkins' accusation that Facebook censored him never made any sense. Because think about this. Why would Facebook punish him for something he posted on Twitter? They are different companies. They have different moderation rules. They have different people working there. Why would one company care about what you post on the other one? That doesn't make any sense. And then why would Facebook punish him for anti-trans thinking that is all over the place on Facebook? Evangelist Franklin Graham, who has a gazillion followers on Facebook, posts so much more vile stuff than Dawkins did and does it all the time. Franklin Graham's still on Facebook. I am not even friends with, I don't think, any anti-trans people. Otherwise, I would have called them out a while ago. But I still saw many accusations, the false misinformation about Khalif on my feed. And I'm like, where is this coming from? Because anti-trans stuff was everywhere. That's the answer. So this idea that Facebook is punishing Richard Dawkins and only Richard Dawkins for shit a lot of dumb people were saying, that's ridiculous. All right? And then, listen, if you've ever had a Facebook page that got a warning for something you posted or was on the verge of getting deleted because of something you posted, then you know how this works. Facebook doesn't just zap it out of existence they send you a warning when you log in. It says, hey, you posted this. You cannot post this, so delete it now, or we may have to take further action. Like, they always tell you what's going on. You don't have to agree with it or like it, but they do tell you what's happening. So this idea that Facebook nuked his page out of existence without telling him anything, that seems really weird, very unusual. That's just not how anything works on that site. But that raises a question like, what the hell happened to Richard Dawkins' page? Well, a couple days later, here two things happened. That tweet where Richard Dawkins accused Facebook of nuking his page was deleted, completely gone. I showed you a screenshot for that reason, because it's not up there anymore. The other thing is Richard Dawkins' page was back up. Here it is. It's up there right now. His page is back up and running, and he's just posting his usual boring questions about stuff like, whatever, who cares? It's fine. Um, but his page is back up and running. So something happened. Something happened. What the hell happened, right? And only after all that did we start to get answers. My favorite answer, and this did not get the attention that Dawkins' allegation got, is that someone from Facebook publicly chimed in, okay, in response to what he was saying. This is uh, I'm going to show you this. This is Danny Lever, and she is public affairs and communications director at Meta, the company that runs Facebook. And she says there's no censorship at all. And just read through this because she posted a version of this message all over the place, trying to tamp down misinformation. OK, this is not what happened. Dawkins account appears to have been compromised or hacked. So we took action to secure the account and prevent wrong usage of the page. That happened on July 30th. His last post was on July 25th before the Olympics even started and was not even topical to boxing. This action had nothing to do with any content Mr. Dawkins posted, and we're in the process of restoring the page as soon as it is secured. While we were focused on securing the page, we regret that we were not able to communicate this to the account holder more promptly. So, let me put that in English in case you need any help here. Dawkins' page got hacked, or at least Facebook thought he got hacked, so they shut down the page and basically said, hey, Dawkins, is this you or is your page hacked? And all Dawkins had to do is say, no, everything is cool, and that's it. They would have given him the page back without an issue, but he hadn't taken that step. That's what it looked like had happened. This person from Facebook also said directly to Dawkins under that tweet, let me show you this, the removal of your page was a precautionary measure due to indications of potential compromise, not due to any issues with the content you posted. We're actively working to secure the page and we'll restore it promptly once we ensure its safety. It's possible you were not notified promptly while we were focused on securing your page and we apologize for that, which is a very polite way of saying like, 
listen, old man, log into Facebook and take care of this shit. <laughs> Sorry we can't make it more clear to you. So now we have an answer. They thought his page was hacked. Dawkins didn't fix the problem. What the hell? And then, you know how I know this is really messed up? Because I looked at Richard Dawkins' Twitter feed before he tweeted about the boxer. And guess what he wrote days before to confirm what that Facebook lady was saying? This is from, look at the date here, August 2nd, well before his tweet about the boxer. He says, my Facebook page has been deleted for no apparent reason, and we have not received a response through Meta or Facebook for a resolution. Was it something I said? This is before the boxer thing. So just timeline here. He posts this tweet right now saying his Facebook page was deleted for reasons unknown. Then he says something stupid on Twitter about the Algerian boxer falsely accusing her of being trans and therefore not eligible to compete. Then he says, my page was deleted. Was it because of that tweet? And that goes viral. Meanwhile, had Dawkins just rewound the tape a few days, he would have seen, buddy, your page was deleted way before you tweeted that comment. So what the hell are you doing? What is going on with this old man? What the hell? And then, and then, last night, after all of this, after all the drama he caused, he finally posts something on his own Substack because he has one. Uh, and look at this. I got it wrong. And just think for a second. I mean, that's all that's a that's an a catchy headline. What did you get wrong, Richard Dawkins? Think about the options here. I was wrong to accuse Facebook. I was wrong to not check that my page was deleted before I said it was deleted? Am I wrong about the trans athlete who's not trans? I mean, it could be any of these things. He's wrong about a lot of things. Maybe he's wrong about all the shit he's been saying for the previous several years. Anyway, I'm going to scroll down to the third paragraph here. We'll come back up to that in a second. But look at this explanation, which blows my mind here. We'll go back up in a second. But look at this. On August 10th, I received an email from an official at Facebook saying he was looking into the question, which, by the way, as someone who has a page on Facebook, that type of service is not available to normies <laughs> like me. He sent me a second email the same day, giving a full explanation. Facebook's records showed, he explained, that one of the admins with access to my account had been hacked as long ago as June 22nd, and the hacker added a flurry of unauthorized admins. So it looks like someone with access to Dawkins' page is now adding like 10, 20 people and saying you can all run the page, which is what you would do if you wanted bad people to run the page and give everybody access to it. Bad idea. Facebook sees that and then shuts down the page, which is exactly what you want Facebook to do in that situation. Dawkins goes on to say, their subsequent behavior alerted Facebook, who closed the account down while they worked on the problem. My Facebook account was restored on August 11th, and I am very grateful. Okay, so he was wrong about that. It wasn't because of anything he posted. It's because they he actually got hacked, or at least Facebook thought he got hacked. And I just want to point out, like, how could you hack that? I think it was Eli Bosnick at the Scathing Atheist who's like, was Dawkins' password password? And someone got in and started taking advantage of it. And like all Dawkins had to do, I am guessing, I'm speculating here. All he had to do was log on to Facebook. And the first thing he would have seen is, is your page hacked? Change your password, log in, go through some two-step verification thing so we know it's you. And then we'll give you back your page. And he did none of that. Maybe he forgot that his password was password, and then he changed it to, like, password one. And now it's safe and secure, and no one will ever get access to it. So, okay, later on, he says, I, he said later in this piece, I accept responsibility and publish this to correct the record and apologize, which is good. You want people to apologize for things like that. But I want to go back up one paragraph before that just to, to finish this thought here. Because no reason was given for the shutdown and no reply to the lawyer's overtures, I'm sorry to say we jumped to the wrong conclusion. And then he explains his conclusion. Might it have some connection with my contemporaneous stand against genetically male boxers fighting women in the Olympics? 
I then tweeted what turned out to be a false suspicion of Facebook's motives, and I deeply regret this. Back up for a second, buddy. We already know it wasn't because of what you tweeted, but look at what he's saying. Like, are you mad at me because I tweeted that genetically male boxers shouldn't be fighting women? A genetically male boxer was not fighting a woman, which is to say he's still lying about the trans boxer. He is not correcting the record on the trans boxer. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. He's not correcting the record where he accused that boxer of being trans when she is not. Like, he's not apologizing for the bigger issue here. He's apologizing for his stupid assumption that Facebook was punishing him for that. Punishing him for that. So, like, he's still, what the hell? How is your whole persona critical thinking, rational thinking? Um, you know, having clarity of mind, and then you make multiple dumb mistakes and only apologize for like the least serious of the problems, right? It's so frustrating. Like maybe double check what stupid stuff you say before tweeting something out to 3 million plus followers. But again, he's still lying about the boxer. He's still claiming she was trans. She is not. So Dawkins is still being Dawkins. It's very frustrating. And I'm going to get to this in the next story. But listen, if it was just one dude who says stupid shit, okay, there's not much we could do about it. But the Center for Inquiry, one of the largest humanist, secular humanist groups in the country, is affiliated with Richard Dawkins. Their foundations merged years ago. So like, yeah, I'm going to blame CFI for continuing their affiliation with this guy. Why the hell are they working with somebody, lending their credibility and vice versa to a guy who doesn't deserve it? That is also frustrating to me.